Welcome to The Past People, where I will talk about the people of the past. Francois Marie was born on the 4th of May 1677 at the Chateau de Maintenon and was the youngest illegitimate daughter of Louis XIV and Madame de Montespan. The king and the Montespan were still sharing beds and so she was sent to live with Madame de Maintenon with her elder brother Louis Alexander because the Marquis did not approve. When she was four years old, she was given the courtesy title of Mademoiselle de Blois upon her legitimization by the king. Her half-sister Marie Anne previously held the title, and like her other siblings, the mother would not be registered on the legitimization document to stop the Monsieur de Montespan claiming the children as his own. Mademoiselle de Blois was known for being very beautiful and naturally shy like her mother, but full of pride for the royal blood running through her veins from her father, the king. Although illegitimate, Louis the Fourteenth loved all of his children, and as all parents do, wanted the best for them. He married them into great noble houses of France to ensure their prestige in the court, as many saw them as royal bastards rather than purebred princesses and princes. Marie Anne, her sister, the former Mademoiselle de Blois, and Louise Francois, both married a prince de Sang. Mademoiselle de Blois was alleged to be his favourite daughter, and so her arranged marriage was to be to the best bachelor available. The groom he picked for his daughter was the son and heir of Monsieur and Madame, thus the king's nephew and the future head of the House of Orleans. The king's sister-in-law was outraged by the arrangement. She had a disliking towards those born out of wedlock, and that included illegitimate royals. She was worried that her son's status would be detrimentally tarnished, and she was not the only one who was against the marriage, as most of the French court was against the idea too. But she knew, ultimately, that she could not compete against the king's wishes to preserve his daughter's rank in society, and it didn't take long for the king to persuade his brother to change his mind. He bribed members of the court to put in a good word in favour of the partnership, as well as offering his brother high military positions. This won over the father and son towards the match, and luckily for the king, he only needed their permission for the marriage to go ahead. The mother was still hesitant and made her son promise that he would not marry her. She was certain that no privileges would make up for the ill match and played reputation that her family would be associated with. The groom's mother discovered that her son had gone back on his promise and she confronted him with a physical attack in front of the whole court. She was still bitter about the match as well as the bride's perception of herself being so different to reality. Francois allegedly saw herself as a prestigious filly de France and that she was doing the groom and his family a favour by marrying him. The mother-in-law wrote, all the ladies-in-waiting have made her believe that she did my son honour in marrying him, and she is so vain and her own birth and that of her brothers and sisters that she will not hear a word said against them. She will see not any difference between legitimate and illegitimate children. However, this was not the case, and many of those in court actually saw her as being lower down on the social ladder. The bride was not fazed by the match and said, I care not that he loves me, but that he marries me. The marriage did go ahead. Who was the mother-in-law to question the decision of a king? The wedding went ahead and for sale on the 18th of February 1692 with huge celebrations, a huge banquet and great pomp in the Gallery de Glace. Madame de Montespan, mother to the bride, was not invited to the wedding and when the wedding finished, Cardinal de Bouillon, blessed the wedding bed, and Mary of Medina gave the bride her nightshirt, ready for the couple to consummate their marriage. After the wedding, Mademoiselle de Blois, status and prestige doubled when she became the Duchess de Chartres. The new Duchess ranked as Petite Fully de France now, and was then known as Her Royal Highness. She was the third-ranking woman in the court, and had outranked her older sisters by this point, who were now ranking below her, and they did not like it one bit. They, as most siblings do, had an underlying and everlasting rivalry between them, and Francois would show this rank off whenever she could 
including the fact that the king had paid double for the dowry for his favourite than the other two sisters. With this new prestige, she was entitled to royal privileges such as travelling and entertaining with the king. Francois' mother-in-law continued to be bitter throughout her marriage, and she thought that her daughter-in-law was lazy and did nothing but eat and drink, so she encouraged her son to have a mistress, and so he did. Francois remained unfazed by his actions, and she was too lazy to seek a lover for herself. Francois Marie and Philippe had eight children, born between 1693 and 1716, of which seven reached adulthood. These children would never be recognised as grandchildren of the king, much to her disgust. Saint Simon wrote, She had a head full of fantasies that she could not realise, not content with the modern rank of granddaughter of France, which she enjoyed through her husband. She could not bear the idea that her children were only princes of the blood and dreamed up a rank for them that was betwixt and between great-grandchildren of France. Her father-in-law died of a stroke in 1701, thought to have been brought on by an argument with the king, when the king was angered by his son-in-law flaunting his pregnant mistress around the court. When he died, his title of Duke d'Orléans was inherited by his son, and so the married couple also inherited his royal palaces and residences, the Palais Royal in Paris, and the Chateau de Saint-Cloud. The new Duke d'Orléans amused himself in debauched ways, while the Duchess led a more quiet life in company of selected ladies of the court. When the king died in 1715, Francois's husband was appointed regent of France to the young Louis XV, making Francois the highest-ranking woman in France. When her husband died in 1723, she outlived him by 26 years in St. Cloud, in Palais Royal. She was the last child alive of Louis XIV before dying on the 1st of February, 1749. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.